Joining me now, someone who could hopefully help answer some of those questions, Maryland Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen. Senator, thank you for being with us, uh, especially given that it's the holidays. Uh, and given that, the president says he hasn't spoken to Joe Manchin. Uh, what's the status of Build Back Better? Any talks recently? What can you tell us? Well, Allison, it's great to be with you. Uh, we did have a Senate Democratic uh, Caucus uh, meeting uh, last week, and uh, the mood was very upbeat uh, in the sense that w I think we are going to get something important done. Uh, look, the American people are feeling a financial squeeze uh, in their family budgets, and so uh, this initiative will help lower the cost of prescription drugs, lower the cost of child care. It will expand opportunities for every American through early education and uh, more apprenticeships and job training opportunities, and finally help uh, fight the climate crisis. So I do think major pieces of this uh, will ultimately get over the finish line. So you mentioned the squeeze on families and the climate crisis. How worried are you about losing or reducing the child tax credit or the climate portions of this bill? Well, I think we'll be able to keep the, the climate portions, and we're going to fight very hard to keep uh, the child tax credit, because that's just a little extra money in people's family budgets uh, to help them uh, meet ends meet. And the result of that was you know, cutting child, child poverty almost in half in the United States. And um, that's a good thing, but it's not a good thing if it ends uh, at the end of this year, which it's currently scheduled to do. And so uh, we're going to be fighting very hard uh, to try to keep that uh, important provision in place. As you know, that means up to $300 uh, per child per family. Um, and that's really helping relieve the squeeze on family budgets. It's hard to believe, but in just a couple of days, we are in a midterm year. Uh, the Democratic majority on the Hill, both in the House and Senate, razor thin. If the president of your party can't point to a major win in 2022 and this pandemic keeps dragging on, uh, what will that mean uh, for the midterms? Well, Allison, first of all, let's not forget the huge accomplishments uh, in President Biden's first year, uh, beginning with the American Rescue Plan, uh, which helped deploy vaccines more quickly and more equitably throughout the country and help stabilize uh, the economy. Uh, and then the passage of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. I mean, either of those alone uh, would be considered in our major accomplishments. Uh, but we know that there's still work to be done. That's why we want to pass uh, this important initiative to uh, help families, um, you know, in, in the ways we've just talked about. Also, uh, we're pushing ahead with the Freedom to Vote Act. Uh, we're about to come up on the uh, awful anniversary of January 6th, where there was an effort uh, to prevent the vote count uh, when, with the violent mob attacking the Capitol. Uh, when that didn't work, we saw state legislatures around the country, Republican-controlled legislatures, passing these laws uh, to make it harder for people to vote. So uh, we want to address that uh, as an urgent matter of business in January as well. Uh, you, you mentioned voting rights there. Uh, how optimistic are you? What's your take on, on, on whether you can get something done on voting rights uh, as we head into this new year? I, I think a lot of Americans are feeling like, OK, a year has ended. There were perhaps accomplishments in 2021. But show me what you got in 2022. Well, this is a, an existential uh, threat to our, our democracy, what's happening in these state legislatures. And I think that there's agreement uh, among every member of the Democratic caucus uh, that it's important to do something about it. Unfortunately, we don't have a single Republican senator uh, willing to stand up to protect our democracy. And so we are working as a caucus uh, to try to make sure that we get all 50 of our members uh, to find a path uh, to getting this done. Um, and January will be the make or break month for doing that. Yeah. Uh, Senator, before you go, I, I just wanted to ask you today about Harry Reid, the former Senate Majority Leader, passing away yesterday. Uh, is there something in particular you'll remember most about him or, or, or would just like to share in his memory? Sure. I, look, I, I love Harry Reid. Uh, I, I was in the House um, when he was the Majority Leader in the Senate, but I was a member of the House leadership. So every couple of weeks, um, five of us from the House, uh, led by Speaker Pelosi, would meet with Harry Reid and some of the, you know, Democratic uh, senators. And, um, you know, Harry was a fighter. Uh, that 
that word is overused in American politics, um, but not when it comes to Harry Reid. As you know, he came from a very humble background, uh, was a scrappy boxer, uh, and then rose mm -hmm. to the most powerful position in the Senate and used that power uh, to help the underdog uh, and to try to push for dignity and fairness uh, for every American. Um, a man of very few words. Uh, he didn't stand on ceremony. <laughs> he wasn't big on small talk, uh, but he was focused on getting the job done, and he did. Uh, Senator Van Hollen, thank you so much uh, for sharing that tribute to him. We really appreciate it. Happy New Year to you.